Um, and during this session, we're first of all going to hear from uh, Paul Coglan and um, Gonzalo Espigo uh, Pareso, uh, who are both from Trinity College Dublin. Um, now, the reason that I've invited these two along is that in the summer I was at a conference uh, where they were presenting their research and it was just so interesting and relevant to this project. Um, they've already been looking at the responsibility and the reactions of supply chain members uh, to the issues of plastic packaging and, and how we deal with that. Uh, and their conclusions I found um, particularly interesting. So in a, in a moment, I'm going to hand over to, uh, to Paul and Gonzalo um, to talk us through their research findings so far. I'm then going to hand over to Savita, uh, Savita Verma, who is one of the research assistants on our project and who has been looking at what the literature says uh, about the responsibility in the supply chain for plastic packaging. Uh, thank you, Linda, um, and uh, for the invitation to this absolutely wonderful um, workshop, and it's, uh, it's a great pleasure to be here. Uh, greetings from the east coast of Ireland, where it's bright and sunny, and uh, yes, soft plastic packaging can now be recycled, um, and we're very pleased uh, with that uh, as a prospect. Just, uh, I'm a professor in operations management uh, in Trinity College in Dublin, and currently and for many years I've been researching in the area of water and energy, looking in particular at how to reduce the carbon footprint of water and distribution. And much of that work, uh, which is collaborative with practice, we're working with Bangor University in Wales, much of that work is framed in a, um, a, a CE uh, context. So when uh, the opportunity arose last year to work with Gonzalo um, on his MSc dissertation research. I jumped at it <clears throat> and I was taken very much by his focus on how, this, how circular economy thinking is understood in the food supply chain in Spain um, and how companies there might collaborate uh, in its implementation. And I think the idea in it of uh, what is, we talk about circular economy, but what is the kind of thinking uh, that's required uh, of all of the stakeholders? And we've heard of some of it during the morning so far. Um, and what's the evidence that we found of it? So Gonzalo was going to take us through the essence of uh, this research. Um, and hopefully that will prompt uh, a lively discussion. So Gonzalo, over to you. Thank you, Paul. So as Paul said, uh, the, the aim of this presentation is to explain our research findings and to start a discussion about who should be responsible for the plastic packaging in the supply chain. Uh, the motivation of this research was uh, that there was an opportunity when completing my master uh, to investigate about the, the use of circular economy thinking and investigate also about sustainability in the food supply chain. And the question why in supply chain, in the food supply chain is because the increasing environmental cost of plastic packaging and the importance of the food packaging industry in that. Uh, so there was an opportunity to investigate about three Spanish companies involved in food packaging. And that's what we are going to talk about now. So the research questions of this research paper were how is circular economy thinking understood in the food supply chain and how my companies collaborate in its implementation. And as uh, the first thing that we have to do uh, is to define what is circular economy, what is circular economy and it's something that uh, is a concept that Ian has already introduced. Um, so the Helen MacArthur Foundation, one of the main promoters of the circular economy, defines it as industrial system that is restorative and regenerative by intention and design. And it replaced the end of life concept with restoration and aims for the elimination of waste through the superior design of materials, product systems, and with this in the business model. So circular economy is a, is a business model that is based in three, uh, the three are principles, something that has also been introduced in the Coca-Cola case. 
Um, these concepts are reuse, reduction, and recycle. So reduction refers to minimizing the raw materials and energy, energy consumed, and therefore the, the, the pollution generated and waste discharge. And this is the most, uh, one of the ideal cases or the ideal concepts to, to apply. Then reduce, uh, sorry, reuse is the, that products are reused for the original uh, concept function. And it might be highly beneficial and require fewer resources and less energy uh, than manufacturing uh, new products or recycling them. And the last one is recycling, which is uh, move uh, the final waste to the beginning of the supply chain. So that's why it's not the most desirable one as it was explained before. And it refers to the recovery operations uh, carried out with the aim of reprocessing waste into other products, substances, or materials. So these are the three main concepts that need to be applied in order to achieve a, a, a shift from the current linear model of make, use, and dispose of to the circular economy. So this is our research framework that we have developed based on the literature re review and the, the circular economy principles. And it's also uh, based on our research questions. So the, there are four categories. The first one is circular, eco uh, circular economy thinking, and it refers to how companies understand circular economy and companies and management, and how they embed the circular economy principles. And this is a concept that also takes into account the design thinking, as for example, it takes uh, uh, emphasizing and framing to support uh, the focusing on this, the problem and also takes uh, the ideation, testing and prototyping to focus on the solution. It is linked with the opportunities. So the wider the circular economy thinking, the more opportunities companies are able to identify. Uh, so the circular economy thinking and opportunities are linked and require implementation. So through the way companies implement uh, circular economy, they are able to achieve uh, or to, to get different benefits. So what we did is to investigate uh, or to develop three different case studies. And we identified three Spanish uh, firms in the food supply chain and explored the role of those significant actors in relation to plastic packaging and to plastic waste reduction. So firstly, what we did was to develop the retailer or supermarket uh, case study, which is the nearest connection to the final customer. Secondly, uh, if we look a uh, step uh, upstream, uh, we identify the food packaging company. So as the main orig originator of food plastic packaging. And thirdly, all the food packaging companies need uh, packaging machinery or food packaging manufacturers. So uh, we identify uh, the third business and the third case study for this consortium of two companies and we were uh, linked together and were working together to produce machinery and food packaging, uh, plastic food packaging. And this is a model that is based on a score. So we can see the clear connectiveness in the whole supply chain and then through this gray box is what the scope of our research. So we didn't, uh, we can see here the final customer and also the plastic suppliers in the other side. So if we look at this in more detail, uh, the retailer or the supermarket chain is, uh, or this first case study analyzes a retailer, which is based in Gran Canaria and has more than 150 supermarkets all over the island. Uh, it serves both local and international products. And we can see here a clear seasonality as there are different uh, tourists all over the world. So uh, the demand might vary or it's, both in terms of variety of products and seasonality. And as I have said, uh, this supermarket uh, case serves as the analysis of the nearest to final customer connection uh, to plastic waste generation. Then the second one, the food packaging company. Uh, if we identified uh, a food packaging company which has clients all over the country and the group is a leading company in the produ production and delivery of deep frozen vegetables for retail, uh, for food service, 
and also in the industry, and it owns more than 10 factories around Spain. And in this case serves as the analysis of the originator of plastic packaging in the food supply chain. And then the third one, as I said, um, all food companies uh, need the packaging, and that's why we analyze the consortium of, of these two companies, um, which uh, aim to trace the food packaging. Um, so as I will explain a little bit in more later, these three case studies illustrate how the three companies usually respond to their clients and to the demand of, from, the, from their customers. So the retailer uh, usually they, they respond to the final customer who hardly ever demands sustainable measures. Then the food packaging company uh, respond or has to adapt the food packaging to retailer, to the demand from the retailer, which is in turn is linked to the final customer. And then finally, the food packaging, the packaging machinery and food packaging manufacturer designs based on the, what uh, the food packaging company uh, requires. Sorry. So as I said, we can see a clear connectiveness between the three companies, which in turn or which in the end usually respond to what final customer demand. So if we, if we look at the our research framework, we can see here the main findings from our research. Uh, if we focus on the retailer or supermarket uh, chain company, uh, we saw that uh, the company tried to be empathetic with the clients and they were trying to hear their customer demands, but they hardly ever heard uh, so, so that the cli final client or customer uh, wants sustainable demands in terms of packaging. So this is a company that also gained some insights when they started to charge a fee for plastic bags and they saw a reduction in terms of plastic. And they also are, have a zero mile strategy. So they take most of their uh, products or vegetables and fruits mainly from the same island. So we can see here a carbon footprint reduction. But as I said, the main insight from the retailer is that they usually have to adapt their uh, their sustainable demands in terms of packaging to what the final customer uh, requires. And this is linked to what we found with the, the last uh, case study that we developed. Uh, so the packaging machinery and the food packaging manufacturer, uh, we found that uh, they usually try to adapt or to, to develop their designs and their machinery to the food packaging company, uh, which is, uh, their main clients, the food companies, and they usually require single-use plastic as they find that the appearance is so important and think that the final customer uh, can have a negative impact or uh, can have a negative idea of what the recycled plastic is. So they usually try to use single-use pl single plastic. And finally, the food packaging company uh, this is a leading company and production, but they usually have to accommodate their products to what uh, to their retailer, to their final customer, and also to their supplier. So even though they are usually try to be sustainable and they are totally aware of the, the circular economy thinking, as they, for example, uh, try to achieve, try to get their uh, energy from renewable sources, they get more than 50% from renewable sources, and they also try to use the waste as compost, but as I said, they have to accommodate their products for uh, the retailers and the suppliers. So our main findings are that the three case studies have demonstrated or uh, have found that the, that companies take sustainable measures individually. However, uh, this research has found that the main reason for the absence of collaboration is in the supply chain in terms of sustainability is that final customer uh, hardly ever demand sustainable packaging and choose less sustainable options, leading companies to accommodate their preferences. So this is what is the current model. And as I said, companies usually try to respond to their customers' preferences as there is a lack of external pressures for sustainable plastic. But what, what we need is, what we think is that there is a need for pressure on companies up, upstream uh, as a way to respond 
to this problem and this could lead to a change in the whole supply chain or this could have an impact in the whole supply chains and we could have achieved a, a move towards the circular economy. So we conclude that unless final customer and society collaborate and commit to a transition to an eco-supportive eco culture, companies and society might not derive full value from circular economy thinking and sustainable measures will not be addressed by companies. And we think that there is an opportunity for further research or for further discussion after this presentation uh, to change the status quo and creating an, the mentioned eco-supportive culture. And to be more specific, we think that uh, we could address this to companies, how my final customers might be educated uh, in order to uh, put pressure in the, or to put, a, to put pressure that might motivate all supply chain actors uh, to adopt sustainable measures at the different levels in the supply chain. And finally, there is another question if the should companies have a responsiveness strategy as they have right now, or they should also be more responsible in their in their strategy or to have a responsibility purpose in their strategy. So this is all from our side. Now I hand over to Sabita. Uh, first of all, thank you very much, Gonzalo, for your very interesting presentation and providing such rich insights on the implementation of circular economy. It was particularly striking to know that you have also found some gaps in collaboration within the supply chain, and that's such a huge barrier uh, and needs, needs uh, attention. Uh, I also have something very similar to share in my presentation as well. Um, so, uh, as you all know, uh, and it has been communicated previously, uh, the focus of this session is on pre-consumption uh, part uh, of, the, of the supply chain. And I'm going to share some insights uh, on the pre-consumption stage of plastic packaging. Uh, so, this uh, part of the project is focused on providing a comprehensive overview of the current state of the art trade-offs and constraints faced by various stakeholders uh, in the supply chain related to plastic packaging. Um, the findings that I'm going to discuss today are just are based on a critical review of the literature uh, from different sources, including um, journal articles, media publications, as well as policy and white papers. Um, the central question that we have uh, explored is what are the implications for responsibility to reduce levels of plastic packaging within the supply chain uh, in the context of food industry. Now, here is a depiction of various stages that lead to creation of packaging waste uh, in a typical food supply chain. Uh, there are several stakeholders involved in the pre-consumption stages, ranging from farmers, uh, manufacturers, distributors, and retailers. At each of these stages along the supply chain, the responsibility to manage the plastic waste created at each step lies with that particular stakeholder who is responsible for creating the waste and disposing that plastic waste uh, at their level. Uh, currently, it is, it is very challenging to track this plastic waste as well as the losses that occur throughout uh, from the initial production through to the retailer. Uh, most of the times, it is a very linear system and it can be very difficult uh, for recovering and using this waste effectively. Uh, leading to accumulation of uh, uh, this plastic waste into the environment. And we are all aware of uh, how big this is as a concern for the society. Uh, moreover, with the increasing global demand for food and energy, which is expected to increase by 50% by 2030, uh, it, it's going to lead to a 40% increase in the use of freight transport, which means more packaging. Uh, it presents several challenges for supply chain, and I'm going to discuss uh, some of its implications in the next slides. Um, what we have found uh, in the literature is that there are ongoing debates around plastic packaging and the responsibility for reducing it as well as minimizing its impact on the environment. Um, but it is really important to consider the role of packaging in minimizing food loss and waste across the supply chain. 
And there are many reasons that make it very challenging for retailers to stop using it. And uh, we are aware so many of the challenges that Ian shared in the morning, uh, his keynote speech, uh, how many challenges uh, there are linked to getting rid of this kind of packaging. Uh, so there is one example that I'm going to share with you. For example, retailers find it particularly challenging to remove plastic pack packaging used in fresh produce uh, because of the delicate nature and high perishability of it. Uh, and the removal of packaging may actually increase the damage, uh, reduce its shelf life, accelerate spoilage, uh, leading to increase of food, food waste. Uh, according to a report by RAP published recently, over 2 million tons of UK fresh produce uh, is actually wasted each year in the supply chain, which is nearly half of the food waste uh, that occurs in the home. Uh, however, there is a lot of pressure uh, as evident from media publications on retailers to move towards alternatives. And there is evidence that some of the packaging alternatives such as glass, cardboard, et cetera, increase carbon emissions uh, as compared to plastic. Especially if the product has a very long supply chain, uh, these uh, emissions are even higher. Moreover, plastic is lightweight is compared to other materials and therefore relatively cheap to transport. So these aspects need to be considered when searching for viable alternatives. Uh, the, it, it leads us to derive a very important implication that there are several trade-offs involved. And uh, in order to understand uh, what the uh, the uh, un to how we can remove the unintended consequences, it, it is important to go through the life cycle assessment for the alternative materials. Um, what we have also found uh, that many times this responsibility uh, is actually imposed on retailers on plastic packaging, as plastic packaging has become such a serious concern for the food industry and is attracting significant media attention. Uh, in the public discourse, there is an ongoing debate that FMCG companies are using excessive packaging, particularly the reliance on virgin plastic and single-use plastic is highly criticized. With the increased awareness uh, in the society of the environmental issues uh, caused by plastic waste and the problems that consumers face in terms of recycling, it has, added, uh, a, it has resulted in an added pressure on the retailers to quickly find solutions. Uh, what it implies is that retailers are expected to take the responsibility and shift consumer behaviors by providing uh, them with alternatives. So in a way, what we can derive uh, is that retailers are at the for forefront of the plastic debate and are seen by many to have prime responsibility to influence consumer behaviors uh, around plastic. Now, the, the next implication is around the gap of responsibility, which uh, Gonzalo also highlighted. Uh, and it arises due to the fact that even though uh, packaging waste is created at every stage, it is mostly visible at the stage it reaches the consumer, while the rest of it uh, remains invisible to the consumer. And the point is, it is, um, it is that the, in a way the responsibility is distributed across the supply chain, which makes it very difficult to ascertain accountability for reducing the plastic waste on a single stakeholder. And it also makes it equally difficult to uh, quantify the environmental costs associated with it and to identify who should pay for those costs. Uh, now, the other uh, important uh, direction is that responsibility on supply chain companies can be assigned through government intervention uh, in the form of legislation, uh, academic research and media publications, hold national authorities, such as the government and international authorities, such as the European Union, uh, as responsible for imposing bans and taxes on SUP single-use plastics, and for also implementing uh, the extended producer responsibility scheme. Uh, similarly, there are other normative pressures, uh, normative measures, um, such as the UK Plastic Pact, which brings together a number of stakeholders, uh, uh, and we see it as, an, as a way to encourage companies to take up the responsibility ahead of legislation. Uh, the legislation is ultimately uh, could be seen as a practical strategy to a certain responsibility within the supply chain. So um, uh, here are some of the potential solutions uh, that we have uh, gathered from the literature. 
and uh, the analysis had indicated that there is an exponential increase in academic research which with direct references to circular and the idea of circularity in the supply chain to solve the plastic problem. Uh, one of the implications is to encourage companies to transition from a linear model to a circular economy model. Uh, the main principles behind the theory of circular economy are to design out waste and pollution, keep products and materials in use and regenerating natural system. Uh, what it means for packaging is that there is a need for it to be restorative and regenerative. For example, uh, there are reusable packaging systems, uh, switching to bio-based packaging or zero packaging, but also keep in mind if we have the relevant infrastructure in place to do them. Uh, we are also seeing largely retailers actually trialing a lot of these sustainable packaging practices uh, instead of using the conventional plastic packaging. Um, although these have been found to uh, have actually a negative economic impact as of now in the existing studies, um, and there is an indication that collaboration with stakeholders along the supply chain has the potential to make it economically viable for all the stakeholders. Um, academic research has highlighted that to reduce plastic waste, it requires everyone to be involved, uh, policymakers, legislators, producers, and consumers as well. Uh, from a supply chain perspective, collaboration mechanisms are needed. Uh, one of the key enablers that has been highlighted is communication, uh, which is required across the supply chain uh, in order to improve the knowledge sharing and also uh, uh, distribute the cost sharing. Uh, which could actually make it more viable to adopt such solutions. So these are the insights that we have gathered so far from our desk-based research. Um, uh, as part of this research, we uh, have these next steps in mind. Um, we aim to gather data uh, to identify the responses of various stakeholders in the supply chain. We also want to enter a, a discourse with them, uh, which would help us develop collaboration mechanisms across the supply chain and food sectors to drive change. Uh, so here is a call to action. We are look, looking for uh, volunteers, uh, any members from supply chain in the audience uh, to provide us any insights on the existing practical operational uh, challenges to reduce single-use plastics and to work with us to co-create solutions as Linda mentioned earlier. Uh, here are our contact details, and you can always get in touch with us. Uh, uh, that, that will be all from me. Thank you very much.